Radio Theater brings you Margaret O'Brien, Jose Iturbe, Jimmy Durante, and Francis Gifford in Music for Millions. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight is an exciting occasion when we bring together a galaxy of stars you'd find almost impossible to duplicate. First, beloved Margaret O'Brien, the only player of any age who has been starred four times in one year in this theater. Second, the world-renowned pianist and conductor, Jose Hitorbe, making his first appearance on our stage. Third, the one and only... Jimmy Durante. Finally, for glamour and romance, we have the lovely Frances Gifford. They appear together in Metro Golden Mayor's success, Music for Millions, directed by Henry Costa. We raise our curtain on Act One of Music for Millions, starring Margaret O'Brien as Mike, Jimmy Durante as Andrews, Jose Atorbe as himself, and Frances Gifford as Barbara with Marissa O'Brien as Rosalind. In New York's Philharmonic Hall, the celebrated conductor and pianist, Jose Atorbe, is concluding a Tchaikovsky symphony. In the midst of this majestic music... An irreverent ripple of laughter spreads through the audience. For a little girl has just wandered on stage. But now a frantic gentleman rushes from the wings, grabs the intruder, and dashes with her backstage. Let me down. And would you please tell me the meaning of this? It's mutiny, that's what it is. Messing up Mr. Iturby to say nothing of the late Signor Tchaikovsky? Who are you? If you want to know my name, it's Mike. And I'm here to see my sister. And who, might I ask, is your sister? She's Mrs. Ainsworth, and she plays the bass fiddle. I don't care if she plays the glockenspiel. You can't go walking on stage while Mr. Turby is waving that stick. I'm very sorry, but may I ask who you are? The name is Andrew's sister. Mr. Turby and me were inseparable. A fellow Bertuccio. He don't even make a move without me. He doesn't? No. Who do you think shoves a piano on stage? Who polishes up that baton? Who gets us hotel reservations? As well as an occasional two dollar bet on the horses. Who? If not I. Oh. So start drifting, infant. Now. I think you're me. So I'm me. And you don't want to associate with no mean characters, do you? Well, very well. I'll wait over here. you to take a powder. Mr. Kirby is coming and he's burning up. In fact, he's percolating. He's angry because I made the people laugh. A fair approximation of the truth. But I have to wait here until I find my sister. Oh, Barbara! Barbara! Mike! Oh, darling! Where on earth did you come from? I gave you the letter. Didn't you get it? A letter? Why, no. She wrote you to meet me at the train. You mean you came... Oh. And when you weren't at the station, a very nice policeman brought me over here. He even... Barbara, I think perhaps we'd better take a powder. You, me? Such monkey shines at the gun set I have never seen. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Turby. It was just a... They're still aboard, Mr. Turby. You better take another bow. Very well. But you, me? I want to see in my office. Yes, sir. Don't be exasperated, Mr. Turby. Calm heads must prevail. Is he mad, Barbara? I wouldn't be at all surprised. Oh, darling, tell me. Why did you come to New York? Because I missed you so, Barbara. Because I wanted to be with you all the time. My. I can, can't I? And Kate went to work in a war plant. And besides, I love you much more than Aunt Kate. You're never going to leave me again, Mike. Now, let's go to the dressing room, and then we'll go to my boarding house, and you can eat... But what about Mr. Turby? He said he wanted to see you. Oh, 
to a vaudeville act. A baby walks on the stage. The audience giggles, and she she, she just stands there and, and stops playing. Who? That girl who plays the string bass. I'll fire her tonight. Good. Great. The minute the orchestra busts up, I'm going on my own. Already the Navy's got Shurovitsky, Konstantinovsky, and Capaloni. The Army's got Fiedelberger, Schliverwitz, and Gubelstein. Gubelstein? Gubelstein the Piccolo? Yes, Gubelstein the Piccolo. And it's also got Brickenheimer, Bachkalupo, Tootle, Flute, and Murphy. Murphy? We have a Murphy? The... <laughs> the past tense, maestro, we had him. Another month, we'll have nothing but females. Ah, perhaps Phil Spitalny had the right idea, after all. And we ain't even sure then. Pretty soon, the waves and the wax will get him, and then what? We've run out of sexes. That's the conditions that prevail. You think they'll be taking the women, too? Yes, when that happens, we don't have to worry. You know, I play piano, too, Mr. Tweeby. Mm-hmm. Intend to no reflection, it's been said in quite frequently that I'm a voitusio. Really? Yes, sir. A child prodigal. Come in. You wanted to see me, Mr. Tweeby? Oh, yes. Mrs. Answorth, I... Watch that tap, Mr. Tweeby. I, 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 I'm sorry, Mrs. Answorth, but, but I have forgotten completely what I wanted to see about her. Oh, nothing important, I'm sure. Uh, good night. But, uh, good night. Yes, Mr. Etorby. Good night. With this scarcity of musicians, I fire nobody. Run along, Andrews. Run along. What stress and strain. What a dilemma. Andy. Do I hear my name? Oh, Andy, thank you. Thank you for saving my job. I didn't do nothing. Somebody's got to keep this orchestra together, ain't they? But babies I didn't figure on. Draft boards I figure on. But babies I didn't ever figure on. It's a nursery I'm running for babies. Me, a piano voitusio, who could be out making a fortune. Money isn't everything, Andy. No, but I like to have it around so I could choose the type of misery that is most agreeable to me. <laughs> I bid you good night, madam. Good night, Andy. Well, Mike? I'm very pleased that Mr. Atrubi didn't discharge you, Barbara. Well, I'm slightly delighted myself. Come on, darling, we'll take a cab home. And when we get home, I'll introduce you to Jane and Rosalind. We all live together in Mrs. McGuff's boarding house. Jane and Rosalind play in the orchestra, too. Barbara, do you feel all right? I'm just tired, Mike. Here, here's something you haven't seen. It's Joe, a picture of Joe. We had it taken just before he went overseas. Do you write to him every day? Every day. And is Joe still right to you every day? Oh, well, he can't now, darling. He's very busy. When was his last letter? Oh, um, a few weeks ago, Mike. You have no idea how long it takes letters to come from the Pacific. It's so far away. But don't worry, Barbara. I've been praying for him. I'm not worrying, dear. I've been praying to St. Christopher especially. He'll be sure to take care of him. I even... Barbara, you're sick. I'll be all right, Mike, really. It's just well, standing up for hours with that big bass fiddle, it gets you down sometimes. I'll take care of you. I will, I will. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Well, here she is, kids. Rosalind, Jane, this is Mike, my big sister. Hello, Mike. Hi, Mike. How do you do? Anything you want, Mike, just holler. Wait a minute. That's one thing she mustn't do. Holler. Oh, golly, that's right. Mrs. McGuff. The landlady? She doesn't like dogs or... Well, I very seldom bark, Rosalind. She also doesn't like children. Oh. Well, all we have to do is to find a place for you to hide. Uh, just in case. Look no well, further. See. You just said where. In case. In Barbara's base fiddle case. Here. Here, Mike. It's big enough to hold three of you. It can be my fox hole, can't it, Barbara? Just like Joe. Yes, darling, just like Joe. Oh, by the way, any news? No. Oh, cheer up, will you? Joe's fine. Sure, I know. Well, now, where's Mike going to sleep? With me, of course. Uh, Janie, what about the sofa in your room? Well, just the thing. We'll bring it in here. Well, maybe it would be better. We can put it over here. Now, what do you think you're going to do? Help you move the sofa. Sit down and relax. You're not touching the sofa. Why is everybody always worrying about you, Barbara? Oh, I just guess they like me, Mike. Mike. Uh, Barbara. Oh, 
Barbara. What's the matter? Barbara. Barbara. Oh, she's fainted. Jane, call the doctor. Call him right away. And don't worry, Mrs. Ainsworth. Everything's perfectly normal. You're fine. Well, good night. Good night, Doctor. Doctor. Hmm? Oh, it's you, is it? I sneaked out into the hall from Jane's room. Doctor, what's the matter with my sister? Well, frankly, young lady, nothing. But she fainted. Well, lots of folks do that. But she keeps smiling all the time, too. Well, there's nothing funny to smile at. Indeed? I'm worried. Young woman, can you keep a secret? You're going to become an aunt. Me? Mm-hmm. Your big sister's going to have a baby. But don't you tell anyone. Well, I won't tell anybody, Doctor. Will I be a boy aunt or a girl aunt? <laughs> Why don't you just wait and see about that? Oh, I will, I will. Barbara, are you still awake? Mike, I thought you were asleep long ago. Barbara, can you keep a secret? I think so. Well, don't tell anybody, but you're going to have a baby. Mike... It's true, Barbara. I just thought you ought to know. I'm all excited, aren't you? Oh, all excited. And I thought with you being kind of ill, it would make you feel better, knowing about the baby. Oh, it does, Mike. So much. You can go to sleep now. You'll have sweet dreams. Yes, I know I will. Mike, will it be a boy or a girl? I, I... Well, why don't you just wait and see? Oh. Good night, Barbara. Bye. We'll be starting the rehearsal soon, Mike. And I run along too. You know, there'll be trouble if Miss Victoria sees you. Oh, very well, Barbara. But all I do is hide. I hide at the boarding house and I hide here. Boarding both Mrs. McCoff and Mr. Turby. That's an achievement. Oh, well, I guess I'll go to the usual place then, Barbara. But I'll be back. Thanks, darling. Usual place? Yeah, that church up the street. I think she just sits and prays. Well, things will be different when we start playing those army camps. I hope we'll... Uh Uh-oh, here comes Andy. Another announcement. Maybe the tour's off again. Ladies and gentlemen of the aggregation and fellow artists. While we're waiting for the maestro, it would seem entirely fitting and proper that I run over my concerto. We will commence with the first movement and kindly watch your vibratos. And, uh, likewise the agitatos. As for the harp... Yes, Mr. Andrews? Your slip is showing. Now then, I sit down at the ball one and we're ready to commence. The first movement, if you please. Now I'll play alone. I'm sitting in my study, putting the finishing touches to my unfinished symphony. And who walks in? My butler. Unannounced. He hands me my copy of the Philharmonic News, which I was eagerly awaiting. And what do I see right on the front page? A picture. A group picture. With a headline reading, Musical America selects the three greatest conductors of all time. Toscanini, I, Turby, and me. Who are those two guys? Mentioning me in the same breath. Why, you could have knocked me down with a Philly mignon. But after due consideration... I arrived at the conclusion that there's room in this country for more than one great conductor. So, gentlemen, I bow to the inevitable. Jeff Toscanini, I turn the and me. We are definitely the victory. At concert, that senior, applauding our genius. Good morning, Mr. Turby. A fine day, is it not? <coughs> Good morning, Andrews. The piano, it needs tuning, Mr. Turby. It needs tuning badly. Mm-hmm. Andy, you are a virtuoso. I'm convinced. All I need is a crowd, Mr. Turby. Put an orchestra in that pit. Then let me hear that overture. Hit me with a spotlight, and when I'm finished, believe me, pandemonium unlocked bedlam which causes complete chaos. And I say that with tongue and mouth. <laughs> <laughs> now, we can settle down, please. The Greek concerto first. Please remember, when we're on tour, we shall have very little time for rehearsal. If I may be permitted an interruption, Mr. Turby. Yes, Andrews? 
The piano solo. I'd be very happy to oblige. You'll be bu- busy waving that stick and... Oh, I... oh, 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 oh. I think I can handle both, Mr. Andrews. Let me try it anyway, huh? I'm consternated. I got talent oozing from every paw. But no, he's got to play piano too. Please now, Allegro Moderato. I beg your pardon. Oh, hello. I went out, but I decided to come back. I see. I'm carrying this tool to my sister up there. Oh, then, don't let me bother you. Oh, no, sir, you're not bothering me. Why? Young lady, why are you taking that stool to your sister? So she can sit on it, naturally. Oh, naturally. But why? I can't tell you, Mr. Turby. It's a secret. It's a secret? Oh. Oh, Oh, all right. Go ahead. Give the stool to your sister. Oh, but really, Mr. Eterby, I... Uh, sit, sit down, Mrs. Answorth. Sit down. And you, please. Me? Yes. Would you mind leaving so this rehearsal can continue? Oh, yes, sir. Suppose you sit over there and let us know if you like. All right? That'll be fine. Good. And now we start again from letter L. Allegro Tempo. Uh, comfortable, Mrs. Answorth? Yes, sir. Thank you. Good. Together now, please.
Well, Mike, how was it? Oh, very adequate, Mr. Turby. Very adequate indeed. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone, take five minutes recess, please. Jane, I've been looking all over for you. Look. A telegram. Quiet, Jane. This is for her. For Barbara. But how did you get... Mrs. McGuff just brought it here. It's about Barbara's husband. Oh, no. He's missing. Missing in action. Oh, Roz, you've got to tell her. I can't. The state she's in. What if she lost the baby? But we'd just be deceiving her. We can wait until after the baby comes. And lie to her every minute at the time? Hey, what goes you to? Oh, nothing. Why? We'd better get back to our places. We've seen rehearsing to do, remember? Was that a telegram you just put in your purse, Rosalind? Telegram? Well, now, who would be sending me a telegram? I shouldn't have asked. It isn't nice for children to be inquisitive. Not nice to know, but quite natural. Roz? Yes? It... It wasn't anything that I... Skip it. I've just got a bad case of the jitters, I guess. Don't be sad, Barbara. You'll hear from Joe soon. Honest, you will. Honest. Music for Millions, starring Margaret O'Brien, Hosea Turby, Jimmy Durante, and Francis Gifford. Music for Millions, starring Margaret O'Brien as Mike, Jimmy Durante as Andrews, Hosea Turvey as himself, and Francis Gifford as Barbara. It's about a week later, and far from New York, the orchestra is now on tour of the country, entertaining at army camps. It's late at night. In her upper berth, Mike hears a muffled sobbing. She climbs quietly down to her sister below. Barbara. Oh, Michael, back to your birth, dear, please. I couldn't sleep because I knew you were crying. Barbara, I'm not ever going to leave you. Not until Joe gets back. Joe's never coming back, never. Oh, Mike, he's never going to see his face. Oh, dear. God's going to be angry at you. He really will, Barbara. Barbara. Yes. If you just pray pretty hard, Joe will come back. He's sure to. Just my asking isn't going to bring Joe back. Oh, Mike, I'm so lost and lonely. Why don't you tell God that's the best thing to do? He'll understand you. Oh, Mike, what does God know of a woman's aloneness when her husband's gone and her baby's gone? Oh, no, Mike, he doesn't know. Oh, well, maybe he gets lonely, too, sometimes. Maybe he likes people to come to him. The same way you want Joe to come back to you. I haven't prayed since... since I don't know where. It's easy. You just say what you want. You just say, please. I just not word to you. You just say, please send Joe back to me. Please send him back. You just talk to him. I'll pray, Mike. I'll pray now. Thank you very much, boys. Now I think you had enough serious music for one day. I understand there are refreshments. Uh... Yes, we are hungry too. How about it? Did you hear that, Mike? Refreshments. I'll be right back, Barbara. I have to go to the cloakroom. Oh, Ross. 
for a handkerchief, maybe. Well, young lady, can I help you? Oh, no, thank you. There's a stool in the cloakroom. I'd like to borrow it for my sister. Go right in, honey. Just take the one the lady's coat is on. Oh, thank you. I'll take her purse and, and her coat and... Oh, dear, there goes her bag. Everything spilled on the floor. Mike. Oh, hello, Rosalind. What are you doing with my bag? Well, I was just trying to... Give me that telegram. Give it to me. Oh, Rosalind. Are you out of your mind? Why did you push that child like that? She had my purse. She was going through my things. I wasn't. It fell on the floor and everything spilled out. I couldn't help it. Oh, Mike, I... I'm terribly sorry. Can you forgive me? Well, I... I always try to forgive everybody. Thank you. Barbara. Oh, forget it, Ross. It just sort of bowled me over for a minute. Hey, what is this, a convention? Get moving, will you? They're giving us a shindig in there, diamond dancing and everything. I didn't know we were going to dance. Sure we are. It's our war, too, ain't it? Oh, by the way, Mr. Andrews, sir. Sir, that's better. The colonel would like to see you, sir. Me? Oh, yes. He wants to thank you for your part in making this a very successful day. Hey, I didn't do nothing. I ain't nobody. We know who you are, sir, and we're not going to forget it. Mr. Turby. Yes, Colonel. I'm hoping you'll do us the honor of playing the piano for us. If you don't mind, Colonel, today belongs to the orchestra. Mr. Turby, the boys would be most grateful if you played. When there are pretty girls to dance with. <laughs> Come down, Colonel. Just wait and you'll find out. Your attention, please, men, your attention. In addition to the honor of having with us this great orchestra, we also have a great artist. I'm taking the liberty now of asking him to play for us. His name needs no mention. It's known wherever fine music is played. So that's what you wanted to see me about, huh, Colonel? I'm overcome with just a full unpretentiousness. What's this? Mr. Turby, isn't that your stage manager going to the piano? But, Colonel, Mr. Andrews is a very good pianist. But I didn't mean him. Oh, this is most embarrassing. Most embarrassing. Ladies and gentlemen, I sit down to the piano. I glance at the music on the piano, and what do I see? I see Chopin on the piano. Chopin's etude. I'll play it. Just as I thought of Miss Print. I'm chopping up the Chopin. I'll play my own opus. Can make your life so mellow Now there's one like him in every town He's half a man and half a clown They call him Umbriaco Could be mayor of New York or of Chicago Umbriaco Razors came from Port and Maine to San Diego Better send for Umbriaco in a hurry. He got lots of time. That's all he spends his time. He never spends a dime. So when you feel low, better send for my friend Umbriaco. Umbriaco could be mayor of New York or of Chicago. You know, the other night, I went and visited Umbriago on the farm. When I got there, I actually saw him milking a cow upside down. So I said, Umbriago, what's the idea of milking a cow upside down? He said, why not? I want the cream to come out on top. <laughs> and so, when you feel low, better send for my friend Umbriago. Boitucio bid you aducio. Brains, 
Lane's Army Trucks Jeep. And now a Greyhound bus. Is Mike asleep, Barbara? Sound asleep. Ross. Hmm? What was in that telegram, Ross? What telegram? You're hiding something from me. There was a telegram, wasn't there? Well, can't a friend of mine send me a telegram? All right, Ross. That's how you want it. That's exactly how I want it. Well, it looks as if we're getting into town. Our bags are back here, Barbara. See you in a minute. We didn't fool her for one minute, Jane. I know we didn't. And something's got to be done by somebody. And soon. The rooms for the orchestra are all ready, Mr. Andrews. Did you get the piano for Mr. Turvey? It's in his room, sir. Thank you, Clerk. We artists have to keep ourselves in tune. You understand. Come on, girl. Sign the register. Oh, Barbara. We're here, Andy. I got your twin beds on account of Mike. Oh, thanks, Andy. Now give it to me. I'll carry her upstairs. Careful, Andy. She's heavy. I got her. Thanks, Andy. You're so... Good. I know I am. I'm beautiful. I'm just a nursemaid. That's what I am. It's too bad you're asleep, Mike. But you'd see what I'm enduring on your behalf. Elevator going up. That's us. Why don't I tell you to carry you up to bed? You say something, sir? I'm confining my remarks to the woman in my arms. Mike, don't think I don't know. You and I, Toby, are chums. All I'm good for is to carry you around. Me, a portable bassinetti. <laughs> Shh, go to sleep. Never mind arguing about it. We don't have to get into no conversary about it now. Just keep sleeping. the doorway, Mrs. Hansworth. Oh, I didn't think you saw me. Come here. Do you like Claire de Lune? Mrs. Hansworth, those are tears in your eyes. My husband loved it so. Claire de Lune. And I played that badly to make you cry? Oh, no, no. It was wonderful. What's Just... wrong, Mrs. Ainsworth? My husband, I... I haven't heard from him in the longest time. You're afraid? No, Mrs. Ainsworth. You mustn't lose your courage. But I... Look at me. Come now, come. Up, up, up. Barbara, the world is going to be a pretty sorry place. I don't you. care about the world. I care about Joe. I love him and I want him to live. <laughs> Right, so far. Just a coward. Coward? No, I don't think so. A woman, yes. Now, sit down, please. Let me play something else for you. This music for you. Happy music. This. Look. Listen.
Oh, that was so beautiful, Mr. Iturbi. Thank you. Don't thank me. Thanks, Chopin. Good night. Ah, you are smiling. Good night. Andy, I guess I forgot all about you and Mike. Okay, clear down last 31 seconds. Contact the car run. I ain't sweet. I'm sour. I'm a sour lemon where that kid's concerned. She's disrespectable to me. She is. She and me is enemies. Enemies. And need I add, I'll be delighted when we get on that train tomorrow night for New York. Now, Andy. So I can comb it. 242, 242. And be here to comb her out. <laughs> Good night, Andy. Barbara and Mike are in the dining car. At last, I can tell you what happened, Ross. About your uncle? Yes. You phoned him? Yes. Well, he's a handwriting expert, like I told you. Will he write the letter? Well, he didn't promise. He mentioned something about it being forgery. But all he has to do is imitate Joe's handwriting and write a letter to Barbara. Oh, Jane, she's going to lose her mind if she doesn't get a letter soon. And the baby. Oh, he's got to do it, Ross. He's got to. We'll call on him the first thing in the morning. But how important it is that Barbara get a letter. She thinks he's dead or something. I could be arrested for even thinking about such a thing. But all you have to say is that he was picked up at sea or in a jungle, anything. Jane, the idea of my using my talents to... Oh, very well, I'll do it. Oh, oh thanks, darling. I brought along one of Joe's letters. I thought maybe if you studied the handwriting... The forged letter will be at your boarding house tomorrow with phony postmarks, censorship, and everything. And I'm counting on both of you to visit me in jail. <laughs> Mike, what's Barbara crying about? What's happened? She's crying because she's so happy. It came Rosalind that came. A letter from Joe. Oh, Jane, Ross. I just don't know what to say. Then just tell us what he says. Joe. Oh, he's all right. He's fine. He was lost in an island for three months. But he's safe now. Just listen, listen. He said, what a laugh I had in the boys when I turned up again. I was so glad to be back. I just hugged and kissed everybody. The men, too. He just kissed everybody, even the men. Imagine it. Oh, I'm so happy. I knew the letter would come, Barbara. I knew it all the time. Oh, I know you did, darling. Now, Ross, what a pest I was about that telegram you got. Oh, forget it. Oh, I was so sure something had happened to him. Mrs. McGough. I just wanted to find out about the letter. It was from him, wasn't it, Barbara? Oh, yes, Mrs. McGough, yes. Minute the post... Well, and who is this? This child? Oh, uh, she's my sister, Mrs. McGough. Her name is Mike. Well, how do you do? How do you do? Well, I wish you'd come and stay with us sometime. What? it will be more like a home with a little girl running about. But I thought... I mean... Didn't you tell us no dogs and no children? Oh. No, no. Only boy children and boy dogs. This is a ladies' residence you want to remember. Right, Bart. I think I have to go somewhere, Barbara. You do? Where? Somewhere to thank somebody for something. She's going to church. I think I'll go, too. Well, it worked, Ross. Uncle Albert's letter worked. But why he had to mention some of the things he did, I just don't... Oh, well... It'll all be over in a few weeks, one way or another. Poor Mike. Mike. I'm praying, Barbara. I'm telling God how happy you are. Could you help me tell him too, Mike? Just say thank you. Thank you. That's all. In a moment, we'll return with Music for Millions, starring Margaret O'Brien, Jose Turby, Jimmy Durante, and Francis Gifford. Back now to Mr. William Keeley. Act three of Music for Millions, starring Margaret O'Brien, Jimmy Durante, Jose Turby, and Francis Gifford. <laughs> Several weeks have gone by, and each week, Barbara's had a letter from Joe. But there's a new bass fiddle player in Mr. Turby's orchestra, 
for Barbara is now in the hospital awaiting her baby's arrival. In the room for expectant fathers, Rosalind, Jane, and Mike are waiting too. So here's where you all are, huh? Here's where you're hanging around when there's a concert on tonight. Or didn't you know? Hello, Andy. Hello, she says. Comes time for the downbeat and you're all here having a baby. No, wait a minute. Not even a half a minute. There's a cab out in front. Get moving. Oh, all right. Come on, Mike. I can. I can. I'm not going. Well, stay here then. Come on, girls. Oh, Mike, please. You can't stay here by yourself. I'll leave word to phone if anything's... if there's any news. I have to stay. You do, huh? You ain't gonna sit there and ruin a concert for thousands, are you? Yes. Look, this is no time for whimsicalities. Oh, we can't go and leave her, Andy. Yes, you can. Go on, grab that cab. I'll get her out of here and get another taxi. Be nice to her, Andy. Come on, Jane. And please, mind Andy, Mike. Tell Mr. Turby you'll have to start proceedings without me. <laughs> Balling, huh? That's fine. Now, what do I have to do? Carry her? I carried you once before and you didn't put up no squawks. I won't. I'm not going. You're not? I promised my sister I'd, I'd never leave her. And I'm not going to. Never. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't mean nothing. Oh, come on, Mike. Nothing is as bad as all that. Nothing. Yes, it is. It's worse. All right, it's worse. Just stop your bawling, please. You, you won't take me away. Who says anything about taking you away? I mean, I mean recently. You, you changed. I guess so. I knew I was a softy, but I never thought I'd fall apart completely. Well, move over, sister. We may be here for a couple of weeks. Why? You know, uh, that there stork, he's a pretty temperamental bird. The stork? Yeah, the stork. The stork doesn't... Swing babies, Mr. Andrews. It don't. No, it doesn't. Only children think the stork brings babies. You should know better than that. Uh, and tell me, uh, what does bring them? An angel. An angel? A real angel. Everybody knows that. <laughs> well, well, you're really grown up, ain't you? Just a real old timer, huh? I'm over seven. I know everything except one thing, Mr. Andrews. I mean, about the angels bringing babies. Why does it have to be in a hospital? You, uh, you mean you don't know why is that? I don't think I do. Oh, everybody knows that. Sure, you just figure it out sometime. You tell me. <laughs> it's a sense. You could figure it out in no time. Do you know? Do I know? <laughs> do I know? You didn't know about the angel, though, did you? You thought it was a stork, didn't you? All right. I'll tell you. Yes? Okay. Angels got wings. You know that, don't you? Oh, I know that very well. That makes them something like an airplane, see? And an airplane has got to have a landing field, see? And the hospitals, well, uh, they make the best landing fields. Oh, of course. Were, were you ever a baby, Mr. Andrews? Was I ever? Of course I was a baby. I was born, I know that. Did you cry? Did I cry? Sure, I hollered. That's where I acquired my attractive hoarseness. You cried because you wanted to get back to heaven. Did you know that? No. Honest? Honest. You didn't want the angel to leave you. But he left me. He certainly left me. He certainly ain't bothered with me none since. He ain't around here now. Aren't you happy sitting here with me? Oh, sure, I'm happy. Every... I... I think you're hunky-dory, too, Mr. Andrews. Who? Me? Yes, and I like the way you play the piano. I even like it better than the way Mr. Turby plays. No, you do? Yes, and... And, and I think you're pretty. You think I... Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'd like to believe that, but I can't be dishonest with myself. Look at me. I'm looking. Do you see the hair that ain't there? Do you see the schnoz that is there? Do you see this macadamized complexion? Do you see what I see when I look in the mirror? I still think you're pretty. And I thought... And I thought that you and me was enemies. Do you know something, Mike? You know what, Mr. Andrews? 
You know that angel? The one that brings you in place of the stalk? Yes. Well, he ain't never left you, Mike. He's right with you every minute. And I can tell you he just don't stay around with most people. He just drops that bundle and runs. But he ain't never left you. And I got an idea that he ain't never going to either. I hope your angel and my angel like each other. Yeah, Mike. Me too. Me too. Oh, I hope we've made it in time. The concert must be ready to start. Gosh, I wonder if the baby's been born oh, yet. Jane. Uncle Albert. Hello, Roz. Oh, we can't stop at the stage door, Uncle. We've got to get inside. This won't take long. I have a confession to make. Well, if it's about those letters, Uncle Albert, I really think you've been overdoing it. Overdoing it? Once a week. That's really too many letters. Jane, I haven't been writing any letters. That's what I wanted to tell you. I started to write the one you asked me to forge, but I, well, I couldn't do it. But she got your letter the very next day. If Barbara got a letter from Joe, it was from Joe. I never wrote a word. Oh, Uncle. Oh, that's wonderful. That means Joe's all right. He was on the island. He is safe and sound. And you're not angry? I thought, well, I'll rest my toe. Come on, Jane. We're going in there and we're playing tonight like we've never played before. <laughs> Maestro, you better go back out there and take another bow. Andrew, where have you been all evening? Don't you know that? I'm talking about angels, Mr. Trevi, at the hospital. That's right. One of them just left a package at that hospital, Miss I Trevi, for Barbara Ames' voice. I'm a boy. It was a boy, Ant. A boy? Andrew, that's wonderful. Oh, it was nothing at all. And Barbara's fine, and she told me to tell you, and I'm going to write to you all about it tonight. Joe, oh, yes, the husband. Pardon the interruption, Miss Dyke but there's still clapping for you out there. Those nice paying customs. Oh, yes, excuse me, excuse me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, if you will excuse me, I have a special announcement to make to my fellow musicians. Ladies and gentlemen of the orchestra, it's a boy. <laughs> And now, for a lovely girl in a hospital, and for the baby boy in her arms, and for a soldier so far away, I would like to play a melody that they cannot hear, and yet, in a sense, I think they will hear it. I know from now on, I will always think of it as belonging to them as their own Claire de Lune. Mike, Mike, get off the stage, Mike. But I want to hear Andy. And I want you to hear too, Mike. Everything turned out just fine, didn't it, Mr. Cherby? Yes, yes, Mike. Just fine. Music for Millions struck a happy note in many million hearts, I'm sure. A 
And our thanks go to Margaret O'Brien, Jose Turby, Jimmy Durante, and Francis Gifford. Jimmy, I'm sure our audience joins me in extending our best wishes. You certainly done very well in show business, Mr. Durante. And that from another veteran is praise indeed. Jimmy, I remember the old days when you were teamed with Lou Clayton and Eddie Jackson at the Silver Slipper on Broadway. What did you do at the Silver Slipper, Jimmy? Tried out a couple of sock songs. What else? Mother says you were really sensational, Mr. Durante. Yes, Lou on the dance floor, Eddie with the songs, and me at the piano. A triple threat. (laughs) <laughs> well, Jimmy, I understand that Metro Golden Mail is giving you an anniversary party next week in New York. They have taken over the Silver Slipper and renamed it Club Durante. How long will the party last, Jimmy? One consecutive night. I didn't have any celebrities for dinner, Mr. Durante. That's cannibalism. Even a Durante ain't that hungry, Margaret. <laughs> Actually, many of Jimmy's old friends will be there. Jimmy, I'll bet you'll see a lot of hilarity at that party. Hilarity, too? How do you like that? Everybody wants to get a city act. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I heard about Jimmy's anniversary from Joe Pasternak, I wanted to be there from the very beginning. Is it going to be a surprise party, Jimmy? Surprise? Wait till I see the joint the next morning. <laughs> I wish I could be there. But I have to attend an opening with Wallace Berry. And what Berry's got? What has Berry got that I haven't got? <laughs> Oh, it's just that we're in the picture together. I tried not to make a mistake on this. <laughs> Margaret, think before you answer that. Good night, Bill. Good, Good night. night and happy anniversary. This is William Keeley saying goodnight to you from Hollywood. <laughs> 